How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video I'm going to be bringing you the NVIDIA Control Panel Ultimate Optimization Guide. In this video we're going to be going through every single setting and feature within inside of the NVIDIA Control Panel to set on your system to ensure that you're getting the best FPS possible, the best visuals possible, the lowest latency and the best overall experience from your graphics card and how to set up and use some features to tailor your experience to your personal preference for the games and experience you want from your GPU, including all of the brand new features, how to set them up properly for your system to ensure that you're getting the best FPS possible, the lowest input latency, best visuals, and are able to access and utilize some of the brand new features of your graphics card to ensure that you're getting the best experience possible. As always, if you do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do consider leaving a like. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. Before we jump into the settings for the control panel and other optimizations included in this video, it's first of all important that you are up to date and running on the latest graphics card driver available for you, because if you update after this video, some of these settings could reset, so you'll have to go through everything again. Head over to Google, Google NVIDIA drivers, or alternatively, use the link in the description down below. Once on this webpage, scroll down to the manual driver search, input your product type, so this should be GeForce, product series, so for me that's a RTX 30 series. If you're on a laptop, you'll be selecting notebooks, input the product, I mean that was a 3080 Ti, and your operating system, then hit start search. Scroll down, download the top game ready driver, select download, then head to the top right hand side to download now. Now before we install and update our GPU driver, I'm quickly going to shout out an incredibly important and highly recommended video which recently came to the channel, which will show you how to customize the Nvidia driver, de-bloat it and remove the features you don't use, to lower your CPU usage from the Nvidia driver, and boost overall FPS across the board because you're de-bloating it from all of the features you don't use. If that video does interest you, you can access it pressing the card on the top right hand side of the screen or alternatively using the link in the description down below. So with the latest driver downloaded, if you aren't looking to create a custom driver or use DDU or you've already done those steps, you can just simply open up the driver, select OK to extract the driver. You'll then want to select if you want to just install the graphics driver or install GeForce Experience. If you don't use features such as Shadow Play or any of the GeForce Experience features, in my personal recommendation, I would recommend you not to install GeForce Experience. It's more software, it's more features is running in the background taking up CPU cycles. It can be super useful and so many people use it. I personally use it on some of my machines. With that said, select the option which best fits you. For those of you that do happen to install NVIDIA GeForce Experience, if you would like to see a guide on how to get the most out of GeForce Experience and slightly optimize it for better performance, I would definitely recommend checking out the links in the video down below for more advanced NVIDIA guides. So to jump into the control panel settings, right click on your desktop and open the NVIDIA control panel. If you can't access the control panel by right clicking, head to the bottom left and search for NVIDIA. If NVIDIA control panel does not then appear inside of this page, we can actually navigate into the Microsoft Store, going to the top and searching for NVIDIA control panel. Selecting the app, then selecting download with inside of this page, wait for it to install, then select open. Once you've booted into the NVIDIA control panel, we can start off by going to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Inside of here, we're first of all going to change my preference at the bottom and drag this over to performance. Once that's then been set, we're going to then go up to use the advanced 3D image settings and then select apply. This will allow you to use all of the custom options and if for some reason the NVIDIA control panel somehow manages to default to use the preference, it will be on performance. We can then head up to manage 3D settings on the left hand side and this is where we're going to find the bulk of the settings with inside of here. Some individual settings which we'll be going over will be best on some systems depending on what it is that you're doing and we're going to be covering all of that in this video. Starting off at the top we have global settings and program settings. If you select global settings this is going to be the settings which have been set across the driver for your GPU. If we set program settings and select individual games or applications you can set up these settings just for that program individually. For now we're going to be focusing on the global settings so select the top left hand side global settings and starting off with image scaling. This is one of the most important settings with the latest NVIDIA drivers and has been a major update since my previous NVIDIA control panel guide. NVIDIA image scaling or NIS is one of the best features to come to NVIDIA drivers in recent history. This will apply an upscaling algorithm to lower your in-game resolution similar to technologies such as DLSS or AMD's FSR but this is at a driver level so you can boot into any game set your in-game render resolution to anything below your monitor's native resolution once a 
resolution below has been selected, NIS will then kick in, apply an upscaling algorithm so it would look better than normal if you were just running a slightly lower resolution, whilst providing you with the major performance uplift of running a slightly lower resolution in more GPU bound games. And in most machines, I would definitely recommend having NIS enabled. The only time I'd recommend setting NIS or image scaling to off would be if you're not planning on using it. If you have NIS turned on and you always play your games at your monitor's native resolution, so in this case, if you had a 1080p monitor and all of your games are set to 1080p and you don't plan on lowering that, having NIS active could actually be giving you slightly lower performance in that case because you aren't utilizing the technology, you just have it turned on in the background. So only turn this on if you plan on using it, and in most cases, I would recommend doing so. Turn this to on, GPU scaling and sharpening. Your sharpening factor is completely personal preference. I personally like to go with about 30%, and I also like to have the overlay indicator where the NIS logo will switch to green when NIS is active and upscaling a resolution. Select OK. Next up is ambient occlusion. For the best performance possible, set this to off. For those of you that want to maintain great visual fidelity, I would set this to performance. Anisotropic filtering. For those of you that want every ounce of performance possible, set this to off. Otherwise, if you want a balanced system, set this to 16x. Anti-aliasing FXAA applies a blur filter. It's not pretty in any case, so we're going to be switching this off. Gamma correction is going to be switched on. Anti-aliasing mode is going to be switched off for those of you wanting every ounce of performance possible. Otherwise, I'd recommend going with application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency could affect performance if we set this too high, so we're going to be leaving this too off. Background application maximum frame rate. This is a fantastic option which will allow you to limit the FPS of any game that's open once you tab out of the game. So I don't like to have this feature on, but you could find this useful. Q to GPUs, all. DSR factors, for the best performance possible, we're going to be switching this off. But for those of you on an RTX based GPU, I would definitely look at this video on screen now, which you can find linked in the description down below, which will show you DLDSR, which is a fantastic downscaling technique, allowing you to render much higher resolutions with inside of games, also record at those resolutions, and get a higher visual fidelity across the board. It's a fantastic feature, but it will take away from performance in certain games, so we're not going to be covering it in this video. Low latency mode, we're going to be switching to on in all cases. And games which support NVIDIA Reflex technology, if you do find that option with inside of one of your titles, switching this to either on or on plus boost will override the option for low latency mode, giving you the best of both worlds on games which support Reflex and games which don't. Max frame rate, I would not recommend setting under global settings, I would only recommend adjusting this tab on a per game basis using program settings, which I'll be showing you later on. Monitor technology, my overall recommendation would be, if you're someone that likes to play slower paced games with higher settings, settings, whether they be multiplayer or single player, G-Sync is nearly always going to be your best bet. For those of you that play a lot of esports titles where every frame matters and you care about every single FPS for the snappiest feeling game possible, set this to fixed refresh. Multi-frame sampled MFAA, we're going to be switching this off. OpenGL rendering GPU, should be able to auto detect your GPU, but we're going to set our GPU just to be safe. Power management mode should be set to normal in most cases for most people. Prefer maximum performance can sometimes be a better option, as prefer maximum performance will stop your GPU from being able to enter its idle state, which will keep its power draw high and its minimum clock frequency high, which could be better for a more responsive experience if you're darting in and out of game constantly or wanting to mitigate any potential for any performance hitches. But the normal power management mode on Nvidia cards does a pretty good job of keeping it idle when the GPU can be idle, and the moment you tab in or boot into a game, it will ramp up to the maximum performance anyway. Preferred refresh rate should be set to highest available. Inside of here, I'd recommend at least using 10 gigabytes for your shader cache size, and the shader cache will be placed on your C drive. So if you're not sure how much space is available on the C drive, go down to your Windows Explorer, this PC, scroll down until you find your C drive. As you can see, I have about 450 gig free. If your C drive is pretty much full, I'd recommend going at 10 gig at the maximum. But if you are someone that plays a lot of games and likes to have a lot of games installed to your system, I would definitely recommend having a larger shader cache size than a small one because this will keep all of the shaders cached. Texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization I like to have switched to the on position. Texture filtering negative LOD bias is going to be set to allow. Texture filtering quality I'd recommend setting to high performance for the best performance possible but for those of you that want to have the absolute best image possible I would keep this at high quality. Texture filtering trilinear optimizations we're going to be switching to on. Threaded optimization auto triple buffering off. V-Sync in nearly all cases, I would recommend forcing off by setting this to off because in almost no cases would I recommend using V-Sync unless you are doing a fancy setup with using G-Sync plus V-Sync 
in which there are tons of other guides across the internet which will show you more in depth those two settings. Unless you're doing anything like that, VSync should be turned off in nearly all cases. And the fantastic thing about switching it off in this case is that games which have a manual VSync FPS cap, such as Apex Legends or Escape from Tarkov, switching VSync to off in the control panel, but setting it on in game, will allow you to bypass that FPS lock, allowing you to achieve the FPS possible from your machine and not be artificially capped. For the two virtual reality settings at the bottom, only change those settings if you do have a VR headset, which you actively use. I'd recommend setting virtual reality pre-rendered frames to 1 for the lowest latency, or 2 for slightly better performance with a small sacrifice to latency, and variable rate super sampling. I'd recommend switching to always on and could provide you with a hefty performance uplift in the right circumstances. Once those settings have been completed, go to the bottom right hand side and hit apply. And remember at any time if you quickly want to revert to the NVIDIA recommended settings, head up to the top right hand side, hit restore defaults, and that will then change all of the settings back to the NVIDIA recommendations if for some reason you don't want to use these settings anymore. We can then head up to program settings where I'll show you a few options you may want to change on a per game basis. Go to the select a program to customize feature. For me I'm going to use Counter Strike for this example. You can then change individual settings for image scaling. The only other settings I'd recommend potentially adjust on a per game basis would be your low latency mode. You could find that ultra or off could provide you with slightly better performance, but the most important feature with inside of here would be to use the maximum frame rate option. For CSGO, I like to have my FPS capped at four times my monitor's refresh rate, so four times 144 is 576. This can be any FPS cap for any game, and because it's on a per game basis on a driver level, once you press OK and apply that setting, it's set up, you never have to think about it again, and every single time you boot the game, it's going to have that FPS cap and run exactly how you want it to. Next up is configure surround physics. Head over to the physics settings on the right hand side, change this from auto detect and set this to your GPU. Heading down to change resolution. I'd recommend doing this on both of your monitors. For the most part, unless you are using some sort of funky monitor or a TV, I'd recommend navigating down to the PC resolutions, setting the resolution which is marked as native, going over to the right hand side to refresh rate and always set the highest refresh rate possible for the monitor. Go down to apply. Go to your next monitor, scroll down to PC once again, select the native resolution go to the right hand side to refresh rate and again set the highest refresh rate possible for that monitor heading down to adjust desktop color settings again this is on a per monitor basis start off with your first monitor in many cases you could find that you get better colors from nvidia by selecting the override reference mode alternatively the only setting i really like to change inside of here especially for those of you that play a lot of esports titles is the digital vibrance drag this slide around on your pc and you'll instantly see your saturation on your pc going all over the place i like to have mine set to 80 percent this could be too high for you but set this to to wherever you feel comfortable. We're then going to skip a few sections and head down to adjust desktop size and position. Once again, this is going to be on a per monitor basis, so you'll need to do this for your first monitor, then your second. Inside of this tab, if the scaling options are greyed out, this will be because you are running NIS or image scaling. But for those of you that aren't using image scaling or want to use 4x3 or 4x3 stretched resolutions in esports titles, you'll need to turn off NIS if you want to use these settings. But for those of you that play it native or want to use NIS in the previous step, you don't have to worry about this tab whatsoever. For those of you that want to enable 4x3 stretched resolutions on your desktop, you'll need to set scaling mode to full screen and perform scaling on GPU. For those of you that want the best performance possible and the lowest input latency, set your monitor to no scaling, where it will then only display a one-to-one -one native render of whatever resolution you are playing your game at or application. Set perform on display. If the option is available to you, you'll then have set up G-Sync. Now in this video, I'm not going to be covering whether or not you should be using G-Sync. In my personal opinion, you should be using G-Sync if you play with your graphic settings quite high, play on a high resolution, and play single player or slower games where you typically get under your monitor's refresh rate for FPS. Alternatively, for those of you that want to get every FPS possible, you optimize all your games and you're often getting FPS over your monitor's refresh rate, or if you just want the lowest input latency possible, I would recommend unchecking these options and not using G-Sync. Last but not least, we have the video settings. These aren't particularly that important. Important. So I like to just select my monitor, select use NVIDIA settings, head over to advanced, set the dynamic range to full, select apply, head over to the second monitor and repeat that step until all monitors have those settings. At this point I'd recommend booting into some of your favourite games, trying out some of the new settings you've enabled such as FPS caps, low latency mode and image scaling if you've set it up. Remember to use image scaling you'll need to go into your rendering resolution of any game and adjust it to anything lower than your native resolution. So if you're playing at 1080p, try going to 900p, then go down to 720p and keep going down lower and lower and lower until you find that fine balance of where you're still happy with the game visually but you're seeing a major FPS bump. 
Remember with image scaling, if you have it turned on but don't use it in your games, you will see a slight performance decrease. So only have that setting on if you are going to actively use it. And this now leads us on to the NVIDIA laptop or notebook section to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible. Flip the laptop over, find your make and model of the laptop, do some Googling and see if your laptop has a MUX switch available with inside of it. If there is a MUX switch available inside of your laptop, I would nearly always recommend turning the MUX switch on, which will offer phenomenal performance increases, sometimes up to 30% in most games. If you're wondering what a MUX switch is, nearly all laptops with a dedicated GPU, in this case a dedicated NVIDIA GPU, will nearly always use the integrated graphics chip on the CPU to provide data to your laptop's screen. This means that the GPU on your laptop is sending information to your CPU, which is then being displayed by the CPU's integrated graphics back up to the laptop's monitor, increasing latency as you're adding an extra rendering layer throughout that whole process. Using a MUX switch will allow the GPU to directly output to your laptop's display, skipping the step of going to the CPU's iGPU, which will in turn lower latency and increase performance phenomenally. Now if your laptop doesn't have a MUX switch, there is a way around this, and the way in which you would do this would be to connect the laptop via HDMI or DisplayPort to an external monitor, ideally one that has the same resolution as your laptop. So for me that's a 1080p laptop connected to a 1080p display. Make sure that the laptop display has then been turned off and is only outputting to the monitor. Once that's done, you're then not using something known as NVIDIA Optimus, which will then cut out that iGPU rendering process from the CPU of your laptop, freeing up tons of extra performance, lowering render latency, and providing a massive FPS increase. For those of you running on laptops, I would nearly always recommend enabling NVIDIA image scaling and running on a slightly lower rendering resolution, because laptop GPUs are typically a lot weaker than their desktop counterparts, so you'll see a phenomenal performance increase from taking that extra bit of load off of the GPU. Pair that with using an external monitor to not be using Optimus, or enabling a MUX switch on your laptop, Combining those two steps could have you see phenomenal FPS improvements on nearly all laptops. And to close out this video, we then have the benchmark section where we'll be covering overclocking and GPU undervolting. Overclocking and undervolting are something I would definitely recommend considering if you are pursuing the best performance possible. Undervolting can be one of the best things you can apply for a modern NVIDIA GPU due to the way the boost algorithm works. Then undervolting your GPU will maximize the GPU's efficiency, bringing down the overall temperature and power usage, allowing your GPU to continue to scale, bringing down your power bills, bringing down your overall temperature, and unlocking more performance and more performance scaling because you aren't getting as close to the power limit or temperature limit of your GPU. That is an incredibly brief overview of it, and whether you're running on a desktop or a laptop GPU, undervolting is incredibly important, and that's why I have the ultimate GPU undervolting guide coming to the channel very soon, or it could even be live now. So be sure to check out the channel, or use the link in the description down below to see if that video is available. And if that does interest you, I would 100% recommend it to anyone, because if you take the time to undervolt your GPU, you'll get phenomenal performance. It's a win, 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 win. Let me know if some of your favorite features and your results in that comment section down below, as it's always fantastic to hear from you. And if you have enjoyed this content, consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, pressing the bell notification to be notified as soon as a new video goes live. And thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Panjano, and I'll see you in the next one.